So the fixed asset module, what this does is this automates the depreciation for your organization. So you don't have to post a depreciation journal. It also a place where you keep all of your fixed assets in one place as well. So we've added some computers into your Zero account. So what happens is here, you'd enter the relevant bits of information. So if I was to add a new asset, I'd put the asset name. I can put my, the purchase date and the purchase price. I can add a warranty expiry as well, if I wanted to, a serial number and then asset type. It could be office equipment, it could be something else and a description. And then this is where it would then work out the depreciation. So let's say, for example, I wanted to start my depreciation on the 16th of June. I would tell the system my depreciation method should be straight line declining. In your case, it's straight line. I can add a averaging method so you can base it on the full month or actual days. And then you can give it a, a rate or you can give it the effective life. Once you've done that, you can then post your depreciation. So if I go to the demo company and I go to fix assets, once I've uh, added my assets, I can run depreciation. And then if I select confirm, it will post the depreciation for me. Let's say I didn't want to post a depreciation, I could always roll it back. So that automates the depreciation process for you. In terms of keeping assets in your fixed asset register, you could always import and export using Excel template. So let's say you wanted to know what's in your fixed asset register, you can export it. And then you can see all of the information on this spreadsheet. So here you've got the asset name, asset number, the asset type, tracking as well if you wanted to, the depreciation start date, the depreciation rate. So all of the information on the fixed assets is available here as well. Is there any tie in between this and the um, procurement module or between the LPO and the purchase invoice? Because the purchase invoice, if I select office equipment, which is a fixed asset, would it then, then prompt me to go into the fixed asset module then to complete the, um, the rest of those steps? So, okay, so that's a good question. So let's say I, was, I received a laptop I paid for a laptop and I entered it as a bill. Do I then need to re-enter it here? So the first step is this, right? So if I was to enter, let's say, let's say I go to Apple and I bought on the 1st of June, I'm just showing, I'm walking through an example with you just so you can see. So say a MacBook, uh, MacBook. Now, the key thing here is the fixed asset account. You have to choose an account that's a fixed asset for it to go into the fixed assets. So if I go to chart of accounts, and we're gonna to go to chart of accounts shortly, you can see that in assets, you've got different types, right? Here you can see this type is a fixed asset. If I post it to a fixed asset account, then it will go to the fixed asset module. So I'm gonna enter this asset as a 720, right? So. So computer equipment and then that's it i'm going to approve it and then that's my computer equipment added if i go to my fixed asset module you'll see that macbook has been added right so then the next step is to then register that as an asset so what i need to do is this information is pretty much complete the only thing i need to do is put an asset type that's computer equipment when I put an asset type, it, the system, it tells the system, okay, which balance sheet should it be, uh, which should the cost be at, and that's 720. Which balance sheet should be accumulated depreciation be coded to, 721. And which depreciation expense account should the journal for depreciation should be coded to, and that's 416. Now here you can enter additional tracking information if you want to. That's only if you are using tracking in your system. Here you can enter uh, information of the asset if you want you can obviously copy it and this is where I'd enter the depreciation the depreciation calculation so I might put start date the first uh, not first of June sorry yeah first of June is fine I'm gonna say that it's straight line I'm gonna say I want to use full month and I'm gonna say the effective life is three years 
and I'm going to register that. Now, here you can see now it's registered. If I run depreciation, now I need to run depreciation up until June, so just bear with me. Confirm. 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 That's May. Okay, so now I'm running it for June. The depreciation here would be would also include the MacBook Pro. So if I was to roll back depreciation for May, this should be lower. If I roll it back to May, here you can see it's only 85 because this doesn't include the MacBook Pro that we've just added. It will then post the uh, depreciation for you. That's that. And obviously you can also dispose and, and sell assets here as well. So let's dispose of the LCD display. We're going to dispose it. Disposal date is, let's say, the 10th of June. Sell proceeds, whatever it is. So let's say it's uh, 3,000. The, the sell dis proceeds account is obviously the, the account where you're going to post the, the difference between the cost and the disposal. Appreciation for this financial, for this financial year, which is just going to say, all depreciation and up including the 10th of June. Uh, so here's my journal, my cost is 6500. My depreciation to be posted is 156. My sales proceed is 3000, so I've got a loss of disposal. With due journal, I'm gonna post it to other revenue. For example, obviously you wouldn't post it there, I'm just showing you an example. If I then run my PL, Here you can see my other revenue where I've got my loss on disposal. So that's that. So yeah, so that's fixed assets. Any questions so far? Suppose if we run the uh, depreciation and these entries have been posted and thereafter we enter another asset mm -hmm. and can we run the depreciation once again in the same month twice? So, so what in that situation, what you do is you roll back your depreciation. So let's say, for example, I've just run my depreciation for April, right? And I've just added an asset that relates to April. Now, if, for example, Robert, your the CFO says, yes, you can post in, in, in April, because obviously once you've closed the books, you've closed the books, you're not really allowed to backdate transactions. If Robert was to say, yes, you can post in April, what you do is you roll back your depreciation to let's say March. You then enter the fixed asset and then you rerun the depreciation, which will then include the new fixed asset. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Thanks.